All right, welcome once again. This is the lecture number six of the artificial intelligence course. What we have seen in the previous class is that there is something called the uninformed or blind search, and we have seen that two um, such uh, methodologies, DFS and BFS. And uh, as we have seen that uh, a lot of uh, nodes are getting generated. However, DFS has a very big problem that uh, sometime uh, the problem formulation could be such that that is it has a infinite space. So most of the real problems are actually infinite. Uh, go, goes to infinite search space. So what happens that DFS inherently stuck to the situation that even if you have a solution at very near place, but since you started here, you would go deep down, deep down, and you would be not be able to come back because space is very large. So DFS is not complete. So that's why we say that DFS is not a complete algorithm. So we are going to see that is there any way to uh, improve this limitation in this particular session. Uh, then it comes the informed search strategies where some information is available. And uh, then using this information, we can say that uh, if multiple stages are there, so maybe some stage is more promising than the other. OK, means for example, what I wanted to tell that if you are here and it, you have you see that there are four options. So if some more information is available to you, so maybe you can tell that looks like that I would not go into this particular way because it looks like that this place is more promising. So I would explore maybe this one. Based on the heuristic search values, how to come up these these things are we would come back to them with more details. So uh, this graph we have actually uh, seen earlier also that this is the map of Romania and we wanted to understand that uh, somebody there is some agent who is inside the RN. He is in the RN and he wanted to go to the Bucharest and uh, what path he is going to explore. Actually, we wanted to learn this um, all these search methodology based on that. Uh, Uniform cast search we have covered in the last class and it actually says that. Uh, achha, before going to that, just I wish to miss, mention just for the completeness that DFS and BFS uh, we are actually mentioning multi number of time. So into the depth for search, it maintains a stock a stack. OK, and BFS uses a queue. OK. So what happens that whenever a new node comes, it you put it on the stack and therefore last in first out you apply in the queue BFS you apply first in first out this methodology. So uniform cast search actually changes this method to what it says that uh, I am going to use an array. And that is actually sorted array. OK, sorted array. So what it says that whenever an item is being pushed into this particular array, I keep I short them. So whatever the smallest value one is actually taken out. So we have seen this into the more detail into the previous class. I would not go into that detail and uh, we have seen that uh, on some uh, example how it goes. If you want to find out that we can tell, but however it is repeated, so I would not go into that particular thing in much detail. However, we would start from this particular point where I wanted to talk about the depth limited search. So depth limited, limited search actually is a uh, DFS uh, variation. So you know that a uh, few minutes back we had talked about that DFS has a what, what problem DFS has that if the search is space is very large, it uh, goes uh, inside. It go deep down and therefore it gets stuck. This is the problem. This is the problem. So how can you improve any idea? Any idea that you want to save DFS in going into this infinite uh, depth uh, problem? Is there any way to do that? Do you have any idea? So one approach could be to limit the depth that we explore. Well, cool. that, that's definitely because what is the problem that it goes inside the depth? So I'm telling that don't go beyond this particular limit. This is the problem. Right? He is going beyond. So I'm telling don't go beyond. This is the solution. 
So I am going to put a limit. I'm telling that don't go beyond the limit L. So whenever you are going to go inside, you don't go beyond this limit call L. OK, so all right. So let's assume that this is the tree I have. So uh, what would happen that let's assume the solution is here and you have put the limit at this particular place, limit at this particular place. So would you be able to find out the solution? Not necessarily. Not necessarily. What does it mean? You will not be able to find because it is going in beyond. If you tell that you don't go beyond this particular depth, so system would not uh, explore anything that is below this particular depth. So you would not be able to find out the solution. OK, so there is something called completeness. So by introducing this particular thing, however, I have saved this particular algorithm DFS from going to the infinite loop, but the completeness actually has a problem now. This algorithm is not complete. OK, because it cannot give even when there is a solution, it may not give you the answer. All right, so uh, however, if the solution is here, so system would be able to give you the solution. OK, this makes sense. Actually, this is not a problem. This is, makes sense because actually I don't want to invest the infinite amount of time to anything. OK, so at after some time the results are not obtained, I can I generally drop the thing. OK, it happens to anybody. So definitely it is a good idea. It's not a bad idea. So uh, so diameter is most of the time we actually know and this particular thing depth limit can be called as a diameter. So uh, this is actually known to us because we know that our solution there is some expectation also no? that uh, solve this particular problem in 10 steps or 20 steps or 100 step. If something is taking 200 steps, so definitely 100. If I, I want the solution to be 100 steps, it's bad. I would not go to that particular thing. Fine. Excuse me, sir. Uh, in yeah. if it is not complete, then in which situation this solution will be used? Uh, so you wanted to ask this thing that uh, if this is not a complete uh, algorithm, then why should I use this? Huh? Is it like that? Yeah, I mean, which some there must be some practical application, right? Uh, which it could be used, and the reason why it is being taught here, so it may have some function, right? So uh, actually what I wanted to tell right now is a method by which we can we can remove this particular problem that is was actually stuck into the infinite thing. There is no specific way to we can I can tell because you know that this this is a new problem that has been introduced. So maybe this is not a best algorithm, so we will not be using this, but this is one solution that we find out that there is a problem. Am I able to convey this? So. Thanks. This is not the algorithm we are going to stop. We would develop different algorithm, more algorithms. OK, so maybe we would be using something else, but this is this is the one solution. So this is the this is the right solution. If we know that in the most of the time, the my solution is inside this particular limit. Or for example, when I told you that uh, in the scenario, if I say that with the water jet problem, if I say that do the things into the five steps only. Water jet problem is also an infinite thing. Because when I, uh, you, you remember what is the problem? Three, three, seven uh, liter and three, seven liter and three liter jugs, and you wanted to find out one liter in any of the jugs. So you keep pouring here to here, here to here, here to here, here to here. So it uh, for in on the graph level it would be finite, but when you convert it to the tree, it again becomes infinite. Okay, so. When I say that, no, I want this answer to be at least not more than five steps, not more than 10 steps. So definitely you can apply a limit on that and then you can find out the solution. This only comes to comes to mind. However, most of the time uh, we this is we are not going to use this particular methodology. We are going to do something else. OK, all right. So I wanted to ask from you that what can you do for the completeness to achieve to be achieved? How can you improve this algorithm? We can put some limits uh, as you said sometime back. Yes, yeah, so this is actually issue now when I put the limit. So 
who, what happened that uh, this was this was the array. Let's assume this was the tree. Solution was here. I have put the limit at this particular depth. So even if the solution was there, I could not find out that. Hmm, this is the problem. My question is, how can I solve this? If I put the limit, then it's a problematic. Then what should I do? Extend probably I can extended. divide it, sir. Probably I can divide it into half and then cover it. By the time right. it finishes, I will stop by the time. Otherwise, I have to go to the next this one in some kind of All division. Right. OK, all right. You you are thinking that this is, has a height of H and you put the limit at L by H by 2. Am I right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if the limit, if this depth is H, then this the, there was no problem into this particular algorithm because I did not to put any kind of limit because I can find out the solution. Issue was this that most uh, that this could be infinite in those scenarios. There is a problem. So you can assume that uh, this this bottom part is actually open okay, for the tree. Oh, OK. Yeah, so you, half is not available to you. So any other any other suggestions? Based on time. One more thing that I wanted to tell you to your uh, solution is this that uh, again, you, since you are putting the limit, it may be possible that your solution is beyond that particular edge by two. Then again, the completeness part you cannot solve, you know. It remains the same because if you put the limit by edge by two, then you would not be able to test this particular item. Sorry, yes, in real life, mm -hmm. in real life, when we try to find out something, we have just got. Let's say try to find someone in a in a in a football ground. Mm -hmm. So we will, if we know something that let's say the person is quite rich, then he will be sitting in the VIP gallery. Then we will start from VIP gallery. Mm -hmm. Limited search. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if he gets mm -hmm. some indicator, mm -hmm. uh, or or a, or a probability that the this particular thing that we're searching on should be mm -hmm. in a specific space, then we mm -hmm. will probably put the limiting yeah. factor, fashion yeah. the limiting factor according to that uh, criteria. Yeah, you are going the, yes, yes, you are going into the right direction. Uh, please try to uh, do something more on this. You are going into the right direction. So to, uh, is, yeah. Yeah, to rephrase what uh, has already been said, so we can have like a function, a distance function um, that would tell how far far away I am from the desired goal. And if the value is high, I can skip a particular exploration. And if I think I think you have extended his uh, argument uh, yes, yes. in in such a way so that it becomes it gone into the different direction because you, now you are telling that I wanted to predict where this particular solution is. OK. So if you can predict, then definitely you are going to go into the why you would go any other direction if you have any predictions. So you would search into this particular area. But um, several iterations. So this, so this, this is uh, actually uh, this actually is a solution, but right now this would involve something more. That how to do the predictions. So this would involve something more. Am I right? But right now we are exploring the blind search strategies means you don't have any information then how can you guess about that yeah we can use the iteration the minimum one and then the maximum like and then in the cutoff we still and then recursively iterate that is that an option so i i just i just wanted to give you a simple um, hint okay few minutes back what was the problem? Problem was this that my system was actually going beyond the limit and it was going to stuck. So I told you don't go beyond the limit. Very simple because it was going beyond the limit. I told that don't go beyond the limit. Solution was simple. Don't go beyond the limit. So is there any way other way? Uh, somebody is speaking. Can you can you speak loudly? Yes. So divide the infinite space into the finite spaces and uh, do it in parallel. 
Uh, so infinite space cannot be divided into the finite space. Na? Can it be done? Means infinite like space. It's, huh? oh, it's like, for example, uh, uh, if you have whole uh, large of data, uh, like some one lakh lines, you divide into a couple of uh, things and then do it. I know it is all once again a finite that one lakh. A fine lakh. Yeah, it is finite. So that is a issue. Okay, finite thing you can do. Infinite, how can you do that? So am I audible? Yes, yes, yes. Go ahead. So I was mentioning. Uh, I don't know if you heard. Like, uh, we can do a iterative search where we start with some minimal value and then increment it until we find the solution. Yes. Everybody understand this? So. So why I was not able to find out this thing? So again, go into this particular direction uh, with this understanding that why I was not able to find out the solution because I have put the limit over here. So what? So at the end, you would be seeing that there is no answer when you apply the algorithm over there. You find find out that there is no answer. So if there is no answer, you can increase this particular bar to next line. And you now now you find out here again. You find out no solution. Then you raise the bar to this particular level. So if you raise the bar to this particular level, now you would be able to find out the solution. So if you exhaust by applying the search methodology and you find out that the solution is not available, what you have to do that you increase this particular limit. It is called iterative deepening. What is this? Iterative deepening DFS. Is it clear? Everybody. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Anna? Yes, sir. So you may be thinking, sir, what is this method? I mean, in some if this there is a tree, I have put the limit in this particular, I have searched to this particular thing. Now I'm going to increase the limit to this. So if I again try to do the searching, I have to do the searching into this particular thing and again this particular thing. So what I'm doing, I'm actually repeating this part also. Yes or no? So if I if I put the new limit, do the search over here. Again, I have to limit, repeat this particular part. It is not a good strategy. How many of you are agreeing to me? It's not a good strategy. Well, it's fine. We can have the solution, but it's not a very good strategy. Hmm? Yes. Okay. However, it comes out to be that uh, this is not that bad a strategy. Why? That uh, if I give you a, just just take a binary tree example. So in the binary tree, how many nodes are there? One. In the next next layer, how many nodes would be there? Two. In the next layer, how many nodes would be there? Four. In next layer, how many nodes would be there? Eight. This eight is actually four, not four. Uh, let me call it a uh, tree at zero number of thing tree at two one tree at two tree at three okay tree at two means all the things which are there into the at the level two number of nodes which are there into the tree tree of two okay so you can see that uh, that this three so can you tell me that what is tree of zero is equal to one. What is three of one? Three. Am I right? Hmm? What is three of two? Means all the things which are there four plus two plus one. How much? Seven. 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 What is three of three? It is. Fifteen. Fifteen. So you if you want to see that closely, the tree three is actually tree two plus number of node in this particular current current thing huh? and uh, if i just wanted to see that what is the relationship between the number of node which are actually here number of node which are actually here number of node which are inside so you can see that this is just a one thing much so it is going to be that whatever inside the two plus two plus one am i right Okay, so this 
this three uh, actually if i say that so what essentially i wanted to tell that if you if you increase this particular tree you see that at the l level lth level how many uh, how many nodes are there at the level of l so you say that it is going to be the whatever items if x number of items are here so the above part only have the x minus 1 x minus 1 number of item what does it mean that most of the item are actually here only not there inside i have at least to put this particular thing to you what i wanted to tell that if you have a tree so most of the items are at the level of leaf okay whatever you have done whatever do you have searching you have done over here it is just equivalent to that so it is not going to be very much means looks like that many items are there because because it looks like that it is lot of layers na however most of the items are at the leaf only so when i increase it it is not going to be very worse because i'm not going to do work much work over here i'm going to doing go, going to do much work into this particular new part only you can see uh, this into this particular uh, arrangement also let's assume that i have a tree and it's at the height h so how many nodes are expected over here 2 to the power h because you know that 2 to the power h would be here just by research okay previously would be 2 to the power h minus 1 okay total number of nodes are going to be 2 to the power h plus 1 minus 1 this much what about this if i if i divide at h by 2 how many things are there they are 2 to the power 2 into 2 to the power h by 2 minus 1 minus 1 am i right 2 to the power h by 2 i think this this plus 1 so it is again going to be what 2 to the power h by 2 plus 1 minus 1 i think this is there okay so here 2 to the power h by 2 plus 1 minus 1 items are there here 2 to the power h plus 1 minus 1 items are there if you want to compare these two numbers what two numbers 2 to the power h by 2 plus 1 minus 1 that is equivalent to nearly 2 to the power h by 2 h by 2 give me a second 2 to the power h by 2 what happens H by two, and and the, into the complete one, two to the power h by two, h h to the sorry, uh, let me just remove it. The, in the complete one, it is two to the power h plus one minus one. It is take it two to the power h plus one. Here also there was plus one. Okay. So what is the comparison between this number and this number? You can see that how many time it is. so you can divide this number by this you see that it becomes 2 to the power h by 2 this many times and h assume that has to be 10 so it is 2 to the power 5 time more than this means if you just consider the 10 depth 10 depth tree so 2 to the power 5 time more items would be here as compared to the whatever is here okay so so what i wanted to tell that most of the items are where most of items are where they are at the leaf and that's why this is strategy is not a bad idea because when i do the iterative deepening search i would be new item which are actually added they are very large i and therefore it is not going to be a bad methodology so here uh, we have to start from the middle right So can top. you explain the formula, or it is random? No, no, it's formula. What is problem? Can you okay. explain it once again? Okay. So I have a tree. Hmm. How many tree no, nodes are there? One. How many nodes are there at the two? How many nodes are there? Three. No, four. I think four. Huh. So let me say that. this is the depth okay and depth 0 depth 1 depth 2 depth 3 depth h add the depth h how many add the depth h how many nodes would be there 
नोट्स एट द डेफ्ट एज लेट मी राइट लाइक दिस ओके इट इज अ बेटर रिप्रेजेंटेशन है ना नोट एट द या नोट एट द डेफ्ट एच इज इक्वल टू 2 रूट द पावर एच हम्म एंड इफ आई से दैट ट्री दैट कंटेन्स एच माइनस 1 हाउ मेनी आइटम्स वुड बी देयर how many items would be there h minus 1 tree that contains h if i say the h so in the h minus 1 how many items are there if i want to find out this so you'd be telling node at the 0 0 plus node at the level 1 plus dot 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 node at the level h minus 1 am i right mm -hmm. if i just find out as the h level h level you know that how many nodes are there 2 to the power you told me 2 to the power h I want to find out that in H minus one, how many items are there? Okay, so this is the summation, and you know that what is this number? This number is one plus two plus four plus eight dot 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 two to the power H minus one. What is this number? Do you know? It is a arithmetic. Uh, it is a geometrical progression. Can anybody help me to find out the summation? so so let me give the answer let me let me multiply this by 2 okay so mm -hmm. what what the value would be 2 plus 2 4 plus dot 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 plus 2 to the power h let me multiply this by 2 2 multiplied by delta h minus 1 what is this particular value okay you know that is it fine okay so if i add 1 to this if i add 1 to this I can also add one over, over there. It's the same formula. From two to the power h minus one, I am interested in that particular part. So this portion would also two to the power h. I can take out. So two, there would be two to the power h minus one now, and I can take all these things up. What is this? What are they? This value. So I can put them delta h minus one. Okay, so I got a formula. What is this particular formula? By this, I get one plus two delta h minus one is equal to delta h minus one. Am I right? Plus two to the power h plus two to the power h because two to the power h was was also there. Okay, so by this I can say what because this removes this particular two. So delta of h plus h minus one. Is equal to this two to the power h minus one. I find out this value. Okay, so what is this particular value? It is two to the power h minus one. So just see, just see this particular part. Okay, just see focus on this particular part. That n h means number of item at this particular level are two to the power h and Tree containing anything that is into the h minus one is two to the power h, two to the power h minus one. So, number of items which are here, this is equivalent in, into the complete tree which is here. Even complete tree has one less item, so more items are here. More items are at the leaf. Is it fine? So what you're saying is for any given tree. The volume of the items are volume of the objects or the leaves are at the bottom. Most. Yes, the yes, they are more as compared to whatever inside. So, what is saying that that implies our search should begin from there? Is that the implication or is that a recommendation? So, yes. So, what I wanted to tell that this particular idea that I am going to increase it is not a bad idea because. Uh, new items are not less which are actually increasing you are actually increasing lot of items over there so it's not that bad idea okay it's bad idea definitely because you are doing going to do more but uh, not that bad idea means uh, if thing are about that very few items are actually into the next layer so you are doing everything again and again that's not a thing i'm sorry for this But sir, the question remains same, right? Uh, like because if it is an infinite list, how long will you, you go? Then for how many times you will do this uh, increment? Yes, thank you for asking this question. Okay, I was uh, I may I forget to tell this particular part. So, if this is the tree, 
infinitary. Here is a solution. I have applied this particular level over here. I have not found out the solution. Then I would increase this. I would increase this. And sometime I would be able to find out the solution. Yes or no? Yes or no? Yes. 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 Right. Correct. Yeah. I agree. Earlier it was not possible because I have gone to this particular thing. I have not come back to here and find out this. So I have solved this problem that now it, this algorithm is complete. Yes or no? DFS was not complete. Even it, it, it this uh, diff limiting DFS was not complete, but iter iterative deepening in DFS is complete. Thank you for asking this question. I may have forget about uh, to mention this. OK, so this is an interesting thing. Yeah, sure. Sir, but then what is the final solution here, sir? It is like uh, final solution like, is actually the going reaching to the state. So when uh, what we are actually essentially do, doing here. So if we have a problem, if we have a problem, so we convert it to the graph. And then on this graph, we apply a searching methodology. So whether the searching methodology would give me a solution or not. This was the question. If you apply DFS, you may not find out the solution. But if you apply iterative deepening DFS, DFS then you would be able to find out the solution. It may take time. That is again, we would see that. How can we increase? How can we reduce the time? And this is called the optimality. OK, optimality. We want to be optimal means we are not going to explore unnecessary lot of nodes to us. It gives you the solution, the optimal solution it is given to you. It gives you that lesser number of steps. It gives you the solution that is actually efficient. Hmm? Sir, here you so, mentioned, yes sir. So here you hmm. mentioned two solutions I could say. One is like whichever you show now, wherein you you uh, fix a limit. After that you search it. If you're, if you're not getting it, choose the next 10 percent or something. And then, and then search as something, right? And the other one which you mentioned is about the uh, leaf node, right? The the, mm. the bottommost node. So, uh, what is the significance of that bot bottommost node there? Yeah. Which you mentioned so, about two power, uh, I mean two power correct. h minus one. Correct, correct. So, so what I was telling that lot of nodes are here. Correct. Okay. Correct. Yeah. So, so the issue was this that when I have a tree. I say that limit is here. At that time, I have searched this particular tree, but yeah. I have not find out the solution. Not so I, would, yeah. I, I have I have to increase this limit to this. Okay. And when I increase this limit, at that time, I have to again search from here, and the search is going to be the same way as because the methodology is like that. So okay. again, I had I have to search into this particular area again because okay. I have, when I have increased the limit, I have to search here again. So you were telling, sir, I have searched over that particular place. Again, I'm searching into that particular place. This is not a good idea. But what I'm telling right now, look, these items are actually way more than these items. So don't think that there is going to be a issue. So you can increase this to a number, not necessarily by one. You can increase by two, five, whatever number you want. And uh, then <clears throat> most of the item would be here only. So but by this, by this, don't um, I just wanted to convince you that actually this is not a bad idea. This is fine. You would be doing some extra work. Definitely you'd be doing some extra work, but that is fine. So in this complexity, yeah. D is the depth. What is B? Uh, so I wanted to talk about the limit that I have put. Yeah, Definitely in infinite. So you can start by L taking uh, maybe 20, 10 or 20. And then if you don't find out solution, make it 15. Then make it 20, 25, whatever. So you can develop a strategy that can uh, that can add more items over there and you keep searching on that. No, sorry, my question is different. You have written okay. here memory requirement is O of B D, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Complexity is O of B raised to D. So D seems uh -huh. to be the depth. Uh -huh. What is B? Okay, so so I'm sorry that I have not gone to this. Okay, 
I would go okay. to this, then we can discuss. Just wait for a minute. Yeah. Any other question? Uh, so sorry, sir. I could not still uh, understand the leaf node which you uh, mentioned. What is the exact significance of that? Of course, I understood that you mentioned about convincing, saying that you can you can divide it uh, as you said, length ten limit, define the limit and such. It. If you don't find increase the limit to fifteen, then twenty like that. That I understood. But you mentioned about two power uh, two power h minus one or something which you are explaining, saying that the bottommost is one will have obviously all the uh, all the nodes because that mm. is the highest point, mm. highest mm. base point. Mm. So, mm. but what is the search any search criteria is there from the base or something? Any significance is there? We are not able to correlate. Okay, so DF, we, you are applying DFS only. My algorithm is going to apply DFS only. Okay, yes. iterative deepening is an extra part that is telling that I would only consider this particular length. So. The method of searching is going to be DFS only. So you would start from here, go deep down and then come back. Then this way you are going to search again. So significant, what I wanted to tell you that this method, when you are, let's assume at the time of 10, you don't find the solution, then you would be sad. You would be increasing to the 15. You'd be even more sad in understanding that whatever item you have searched into the, at the level 10, you are again searching to into this level 15. You'd be more, uh, uh said in knowing this particular thing but what i wanted to tell that uh, it is reasonable to do this particular thing because most of the item would be here also here only mm -hmm. if here one item is there here five item would be there so one extra work is not that bad okay so this i wanted to convince to you but what happens if the uh, you know solution is always probably you know uh, the probability is there in the first uh, 10 limit itself, right? Uh, so if you find out that the item is inside the first 10, so it is fine. Okay, you, you're right. You would be able to find out the solution. Yeah, okay. When you find out the solution, you terminate. You not go beyond the, that particular thing. Ultimately, your objective in finding out the solution is the, the path, that by what path you are reaching over there. And when you discover that particular path, path actually reflects the actions that you have to take so that you reach to that particular state. Okay? You want to reach to that particular state, so you actually do that particular part. Okay. Fine. Okay, so so let us come to this particular part that what is the memory requirement of this particular algorithm? Okay, memory requirement means uh, Oh, what is the memory requirement? So ultimately your tree is inside this. So for the tree, we are not thinking that it, there is a memory requirement. So whenever I'm going to dis, whenever I'm going to explore something, I have to put something inside the memory. And what is that memory? DFS. For the DFS, what is that memory? It is stack. I have to put this node into the stack and then I have to put this node into the stack, this, this node into the stack so that I, I keep going inside and then uh, I come back and see that particular thing. So it is going to be order of B multiplied by D. B is the branching factor. Branching factor means how many items are there. So D depth, D depth if you go, so you, these many number of items at every level, B items are there. So you are going to put all those things into your into stack. So how many items you are going to put into the stack is B multiplied by D. Is it clear or not? Once again, in this particular tree, in the DFS, what happens? That you start from here and whatever its uh, its childs are, you put the, them into the stack so that you when they can be taken out. You put all them into the stack. How many items you have put? B number of item, which is the branching factor. B means the branching factor. You have put that particular thing into, into that. Then for next item you are going to take, how many items you are taking? One item taking out. Then again, you are going to put few item. How many item? B item you are going to put. So for every depth that you are going to inside, you are going to put B item. So if you go to D depth, inside so you how many items are there into the stack b multiplied by d and this is the memory requirement to conduct this particular dfs algorithm and this is related to the dfs only yes or no is it clear somebody was asking this question sir can you yes. uh, just give an example of branching factor sir maybe at load uh, one uh -huh. depth, depth one what will be my uh -huh. branching factor uh, uh, 
definition or count? Branching factor means how many things are going out. OK, so in the map example, you cannot we cannot tell like this, but let's assume we have a uh, binary search tree. So in the binary tree, uh, branching factor is two. But in the general example, there could be more options at every step. So we put that number as a B. It could be upper limit. It's some places it, the value could be lesser than this, but uh, in terms of the order calculation, we can put the highest number that how many options are available at this particular node. How many options are available? This is this is called the branching factor. Yes. And sir, uh, OK, and you said that the depth is uh, zero to infinite. How will we calculate the memory requirement in that case? Sir? Because we don't know what is the value of final D, right? Uh, but now we are into the purview of iterative deepening. Na? So infinite would not be there. Yeah, we know that there is a maximum value of D that is possible. Because we have put the limit L. So this value you can depth so you can take L. I would not go beyond the, that particular thing. At any point of time in my stack, how many maximum number of items could be there? They are B multiplied by L. Make sense. Yeah, but we are incrementing that right again and again. Ah, and so at that really time when cool. that's why I'm putting here D right now. So with the L would increase, then the value of D would be that new value. So this, if I need this, to calculate the memory requirement for my uh, algorithm, then mm -hmm. I need to know that till what depth it has to it it, it will go. Uh, like the what what is the last depth? I yes. Finite, right? Yes, and that I have fixed. I know that I have fixed when I was executing this TFS. And uh, that I have fixed. So that's why I know that what is the value of L, current value of L. So for every L which is fixed, the B, B will be calculated. And the multiplying multiplying of both those will be in the memory requirement. B actually comes from the problem, kind of problem that I have. How many options we have? So B is dependent upon the problem. OK. How many actions you mm -hmm. can take, for example? OK, so this is known. Most of the time it is known. Uh, branch, OK, branching, okay. branching factor. Yeah. All right, excellent. So next thing that I wanted to tell you that, uh, OK, so we know that how much space is required if you want to run this thing. Extra space is required when you want to run this algorithm. And then we want to find out for the time complexity, how much time this algorithm is going to take. Hmm. So time is very simple because ever, to every node you have to go. OK, to every node you have to go. If you have a tree of uh, you are telling that uh, I am going to have the D in depth. So every node you have to go. So how can you find out that how many nodes are there? We have done this computation that how many items to to, to the power H to, to the power H plus one. I think it was this. Yes. Few minutes back we have seen that to the power H plus one. How many nodes are there inside this complete thing? We have done. We have, I think, accidentally we have done this uh, derivation also. These many number of things are there. For every item, you have to spend at least one unit of time. Yes or no? So how much time is required? You are going to invest it two to the power, and two is not this. It is branching factor. Okay, branching factor to the power h plus one. So b to the power and this high high time going to call the new number d. So b to the power d plus one. Plus one you can take out the B multiplied by B to the power D. Order in the order constants are not going to have any significance. You can say that it is order of B to the power D. Because for all the items which are inside this particular tree, at least you have to reach them. So one unit of uh, processing you can think that you have to do to reach any particular item. So total time is going to be how many items we have. And this by this we can find out this make sense. Yes. So today I don't know that why yes, we sir. are very very slow, but I think it is fine. If you are understanding, it is fine. So, sir, yeah. even eventually this is uh, considered to be good because it is the time complexity is similar to the bread process. Yeah, yeah, BFS and DFS are yeah. Because ultimately you have to reach to all the items. There is no other escape on that. 
if you want to be more intelligent, then you have to apply those methods which I uh, mentioned that uh, I think you have mentioned that is there any way to predict that um, in which direction it is going to be better? And again, I think this is the good thing. What I was telling, what I was telling that let's assume that you are here. Four paths are there. If you somehow predict that I'm not going that this particular path is this particular path is better than the uh, other three. This is a good good thing to do. And then you are not blind. You have some information. Yes or no? So this is called the inform search strategies and we would come back to them very soon. That what is the inform search strategies and how we can utilize them. However, this method we are not going to see that this is again a trick because in the predictions we require what? Uh, uh, some kind of uh, machine learning. And right now we are only focusing on the search. Sir, question uh, may, may not be related to the two types of searches explained, but what mm -hmm. if we, since most of the items are there at the leaf, mm -hmm. can we do a breakfast from the leaf uh, and then get the, and the chances are that we'll get the number earlier, get the item earlier? So, uh, okay. I don't know. How, I don't know how to. Do, how I, is there any algorithm? No, 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 no. You, you are actually completely. Uh, you, you are telling right thing. Okay, that uh, it, it comes to anybody. You are what I say. What I should say that you are telling intuitive thing that anybody's mind it comes that looks like that most of item are there. So why don't I search here instead of here? Okay, this is what you want to tell. Yes, sir. Okay. So first thing that you don't have any information that the item is here or here. What is the probability that item would be here? Half because what I told you that number of item here and number of item in this particular tree are actually same, nearly same to the power h minus one. So the probability that you are going to find the item is only half when you are going to search over here. And what advantage you are going to get? If item is not found, you have to search again for all the items over here. So there is no way that can guide me that if you go into this particular place or again and again, if there is any such way, if you develop any such way, it would be informed such strategies where I say that looks like that this particular portion is more promising than the other. If you go to any of those methods, they are informed such strategies. You would come back to them more with more details for a specific way of doing all these things. But right now, right now again, it is. Uh, you're not going to get any uh, any advantage because you don't know it's it's blind search where the item is i don't know i have not provided any information so only thing that you can do is this and again one more thing i wanted to tell to you uh, one more thing i wanted to tell to you is this that can the question is that can you search the item over here can you search the items over here answer is no why because to reach to this particular item, to reach to any any item which is actually here, let me say that this particular item to reach to this particular item. How can you reach this particular item? Only handle is to the is root node in any tree. Only handle you have is the root node. So you keep disclosing until you reach to the height h. Then any item that you get at the height h is actually this particular item. But how can you get the second item? Second item is not given to you. OK, again, you have to come back and then find out something like this. Again, you have to come back and find out this. So ultimately it happens that you actually uh, end up doing all these things. And I'll, I think uh, this is fine. Yeah, that's understand, sir. The uh, second thing I wanted to tell you that what, while I was telling this, I it came to my mind that there is another way of uh, representing a tree that actually tells that uh, any node is going to tell that who is its child and then this child says that who is his siblings. If you develop so any intelligent method of representing a tree into this particular way, maybe at that time you can perform this operation. OK. But again, I think the for single item, all the nodes are actually put into this particular way. Again, it is not possible. OK. So it is related to data structures. All right, great. So, uh, so any way to improve this particular algorithm? What algorithm? Iterative deepening. Uh, and uh, let's uh, let's think that I know that there is some solution. And ultimately, 
ultimately the scenario is this that I have a graph. OK, in the graph, I know that uh, somewhere there is a somewhere there is a starting node somewhere there is a and I know that there is a starting and end node. So my task would be to find out that what is the path from here to here so that we can reflect it. We, we can translate it to actions that what actions I have to take so that I can reach to this particular state. Our task is only this particular thing. So is there in any way by which I need to explore lesser number of nodes? Exploring lesser number of nodes means what? I would be fast. Very interesting algorithm. That is called the bi-directional search. What is this? Bi-directional search. All of you are. All of you actually know about this. So what I wanted to tell that this is the tree. So why you are applying the search at this particular place and it is actually going to explore and find out the solution. You also know the solution here. Also, you try to search the initial starting point. From here you try to search what starting point from here. You what you try to search is the goal. And at some point you would be finding out a node which is inside here. Also inside here also so you can tell OK, so I can short circuit at this particular place. I can sell. I can tell that this is the take the path from here to here. Take the from from here to here. I would be able to find out the solution. All right, so if the solution is at the depth H, we expect that you would be exploring only. Half of that. So if I say that branching factor is this B to the power H by two number of item you have actually explored. From here also you explored how much two to the power. H by two items total number of item that you actually have explored it two multiplied by B to the power H by two. But if you have not done this way, so you have to explore this particular these many number of nodes to find out this particular thing. How many nodes you have to explore B to the power H? Just see B to the power H divided by 2 B to the power H by 2. So it is a huge advantage that you are going to get in terms of the efficiency. OK, from goal from goal, you find out any node that is actually common from start. You find out any other node that is actually that is inside the common. Uh, however, one thing that you have to be very cautious about that for all the nodes uh, which are actually there, you have to put them into some of the place because you have to keep maintaining a list. When you start from here, you you keep maintaining the list that what are the node I have visited so far. Here also you have to maintain that what are the node I have visited so far. These two lists in these two lists, you have to find out is there a common item. Whenever you find out that there is a common item, you are done because then you can find out the path from here, from, from path from there, and then you can do the short circuit. So I think B to the power H by two number of nodes you have to put in your is memory also. So very huge number of nodes you have to put into the memory. So this time memory requirement is very high. However, this is not uh, very imp impractical to have. Because anyway, you have all these nodes in your memory. And this is the maximum limit. So two times the memory is actually you are going to utilize one more space you actually need where you are going to put all the nodes which are actually explored so far. You have to put over there. So by directional search, everybody is OK with that. Have I given the idea? The idea is this that from the start point from the start point from the start point, you are going to explore the things and you are going to put them into an array. From the goal point, whatever you have explored, you're going to put over here. Goal point, you are going to explore and put into the array. And in between, to try to see that if there is an item which are actually here also, if you find out such item, then you say that I have a path from here to here and then I have a path from here to here and they are same. So you have a short circuit. So total number of uh, nodes that are going to be explored are going to be very less. Here is an example that actually talks about. Let's say let's assume that the branching factor is 10. And uh, the solution is at the depth 6. Let's assume the solution is at the depth 6. So initially you have to put the 10 nodes. Because 10 possibilities are there for these 10s. Uh, if you explain them, uh, you expand them, it becomes 100 more. 
then at the third level you explode more it becomes how many nodes you have ex ex expanded one 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 zero number of nodes from start and similarly from goal also one 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 zero number of node you would explore total number of node that you explore is this and after that you would be able to find out something that is common into both the list however if you keep only expanding from the start one so you have to go to the to, to the power six so first level you expanded 10 the next level 100 the next level 1000 then this how many number of nodes you are going to expand is this much as compared to the number of node which is 2200 is very less as compared to this particular number you can see okay just compare these two numbers you can see that very far you would be very fast any questions bi-directional search any questions on that no oh, sir no question all right so let us see a summary that what we have seen so we want to see two parts completeness means what is complete if there is a solution i'm going to find out that complete means if there is a solution i'm going to find out what is the time required? What is the space required? Means into the frontier. Is it optimal? Means does it give the shortest solution, best good solution? So we want to find out that. BFS, bread searcher. Yes, it gives the solution. DFS don't give the solution. Depth limited also don't give the solution. Iterative deepening gives you the solution. Bidirectional search gives you the solution. Yes, go ahead. Any questions? Uh, please mute yourself. Somebody is speaking. Yeah. <laughs> please mute yourself. Yeah. Yes. So is this it... O is optimal. Hmm? Oh. So uh, right now I'm talking about the completeness only. Okay. Completeness is fine. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Let me talk about the time complexity. BFS takes order of B to the power D. Order big O. O is means big O, big O notation. So B to the power D. It is fine because these many number of things are inside the my tree. So I have to go to each of them. This anyway I have to do. Uniform cast search. We have seen that again one plus optimal place where the cast is, and then I divide by epsilon. That is just a matter of that. What is the step size? Something like that. DFS also takes similar kind of thing okay and depth limited search to the limit here you put the limit iterative deepening again the same thing bi-directional takes half of the time half of the space half the time because it's very fast space requirement very high in the bi-directional iterative deepening bd depth limited bl dfs bm here bfs b to the power d because in the queue you have to put all the items they are waiting over there is it optimal bfs gives you the optimal solution uniform can give you optimal solution dfs cannot give out optimal because if the solution is not there how can you talk about the optimal similarly diff limiter search also solution is not there so how can you talk about the optimal hope it is clear to everybody okay now we want to go towards the informed search strategies when you have the some information is available to you some information is available to you then we call it is an informed search strategy so we can uh, we can go for the greedy one greedy approach and generally we go for the greedy approach only because complete solution is not known to you so there are two approaches i think um, uh, one one is greedy and another is what dynamic programming OK. Dynamic programming, dynamic programming, find out exhaustive, develop an exhaustive way of finding out that which is the best solution. However, greedy, uh, greedy is applied in those scenarios when dynamic programming is not, cannot be applied because of the memory requirement being very high. So it actually immediately at every step try to take the 
locally optimal solution. So in the hope that it would be globally optimal. So if some information is given to you, for example, this information where somebody is going to tell that what is the straight line distance? So straight line distance, you can think that uh, some uh, somebody is going to give you that uh, that what is the air distance from that particular place to uh, Bucharest. OK, you are going to reach the Bucharest now in our example. So you know that um, sometimes what happens? Let's assume that if there is a mountain. There is another mountain inside the sea and there is some breeze over here. Let's assume that there is a breeze. OK, there is a breeze. OK. If you are here and you want to reach over here. So what is the straight line distance? This this is the straight line distance. But actual path, this cannot be the actual path. You have to go into this particular way only could be reaching this particular place. But somehow you know that what is the straight line distance? Somebody has given you that uh, straight line distance is there. So somebody go, told you. So all right. Uh, so if you are Arad at the point of Arad, you say that three places are there. OK, which are these three places? Can you tell me? I told you that you take the printout of that particular graph. Print a screen OK of that particular graph from Arad. You can reach what? The, what are the three places where you can reach? Zarind. Timisora. And Cebu S I B U Cebu. These are the three places you can reach. So can you tell me that what is the distance of uh, these these places? Zerind, I think Zerind is here. 374, 374. And the next is Timisora. I think Timisora is here. 329, 329. And Cebu is 353, 253, 253. So this time, if you apply breadth for search, means BFS, breadth for search, if you apply, on this particular thing. So generally bits for such says that I'm going to be on this, then Zarin, then the Timisora, then Cebu. So would you go into this particular direction? Where would you go first? Can you tell me? Hmm? Can you tell me? Yes or no? Can you tell me? Sir, these these distances are actually the distance from Bucharest. These no. are not from. The, are not yeah, from... The, these these are state state line distances. Uh, the to Bucharest. Are... Yeah, yeah, to Bucharest. Oh, to Bucharest. Yeah. To Bucharest. So you know that if you go there in the 374 kilometers, you have to go more. If you go to Timisora, 329 kilometers, you have to go more. If you go Cebu, you have to go 253 kilometers more. So which is best? Cebu. 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 Oh, Cebu, yeah. yeah nah? Obviously Cebu, you would go into this particular direction. So if you take this way, this method is called greedy best first search algorithm. Yes. Now we have seen that one example where we have seen that it is an informed search method because we have some information. How this information came, I'm not talking about right now. We would come back to this on later. How to find out this information? It is similar to probability of reaching to this particular thing, something, some goodness factor. How good this particular place is. How it came, we'll talk about this later. But if this information given to me, I'm not going to apply the blind search. This time it is going to be a better method. And this is how we can do on this. Happy? OK, so yeah. yeah. So any other inf um, improvement that you can apply to this? And what if the next hop is much larger than the overall? Ah, it could be possible. So that's why strategy is greedy. So it, greedy, greedy people many times uh, they stuck into the problems now. <laughs> but right now, right now it is showing that 253, so I would go there. But maybe when I reach to that particular that place. Okay. Ah, for example, here in this example also, you can see 
if there is there is three places to go okay here if you come here the straight line distance would be lesser so he can go in this particular direction but he would be stuck into this particular place so greedy solutions can be wrong also so however there is some properties if they satisfy then it would not be having those um, uh, non optimal solutions but uh, most of the time they can give the non optimal solutions not most many many time they can give the non optimal solutions uh, but uh, dynamic programming gives you every time give the optimal solutions okay because it is exhaustive it sees all the possible poss possibilities all right great so we have seen that sir, greedy sir, question so question the question hmm. is that arad right? if you already knows the hmm. distance from arad Mm -hmm. which is 366, right? Mm -hmm. I'm just wondering if uh, he's, he's selecting the Cebu as 253, which is the lowest. Mm -hmm. uh, can it not, will it not have the information to add the distance from R to each of these three places and calculate? Exactly. This is what actually wanted to, I was asking right now, that can we improve this in some way? Exactly. You must tell that. Are you? Are you have to first. I have to. Let's assume it is two thousand kilometers. From there, it is to two fifty three kilometer. But I have to take two thousand kilometer. It is only ten kilometer. It is five kilometer. So you have to add this particular part also. That how much I have to spend till now, and then you add this particular number to see that which is the better number. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. Sir. yes. So here is it is an example that I don't want to go through that, but uh, I think you can by yourself see that I am in Arad 366. And then I from Arad three places are there. I see that Cebu is 253. Cebu is 253. I expanded them. That what are them? What are there? Then I see that the Fedoras is 176. I expanded this. I find out the Bucharest is zero. Then I go into this particular direction. I have done this. Now come our most important algorithm. And this algorithm is called the A star algorithm. Hmm? This algorithm is called the A star algorithm. Very famous algorithm. And actually, uh, artificial intelligence algorithm. This is the artificial intelligence algorithm. A star. So this algorithm says that um, don't only depend upon this heuristic one. That is information given to you. You also find out that there is another thing that how much you have spent it till now. Use that particular thing also to find out something, compute something Fn, and then use that thing to do that. Achha, OK, I just wanted to skip this particular part that uh, this information that is given to you is generally called the heuristic function that we represent by heuristic function H of N, where N is the node. On this particular node, what is the value? So here on the Bucharest value is 0. Uh, Neant, the value is 234. So H gives you, given the node, gives you the value. However, you proceed based on some other function that is called the evaluation function. And in this example, we have seen that this evaluation function is actually heuristic one only. So uh, here in A star, this particular Fn function is actually the summation of two things. That is a Gn plus Hn. Hn is the information that is given to me. And then Gn is that how much uh, the n can also be formulated in many ways. But right now we are going to see that how much spend we have spent it till now. And then we can take it. The algorithm is very simple. Again, there is no problem. There is nothing I have to tell to you in terms of the algorithm. Expand the nodes in order of increasing value of f. What does it mean? You are here. You have few nodes available. So find out that what is their f values. F values. How can you find out? There is a formula. H is provided to you. G is how much you have studied till now. If you reach to this particular place, you have to add that what is the distance into this particular way. You find out what is the value of G, and then you compare compute the values for each of them, and whichever is minimum, increasing order of uh, F value means whichever is minimum, you are going to expand that thing first. Very important thing that this algorithm is both optimal and complete. Complete means what? It gives you the solution. If there is a solution, you would find out that optimal means what? Unnecessary nodes, it's not going to expand and going to give you a good solution. OK. Uh, so this algorithm has a, a property that is called the consistency. And this has a, one more name that is called the monotonicity. 
So monotonicity says that uh, in the in the path, if you if you have a solution over here, so you may be reaching from here and here, something like this. You will be reaching something here and here. You will be reaching to this particular place. So consistency says that actually this F value is going to increase. The F value is going when you come here, you come here, you come here. Every time it is going to increase. OK. And uh, one more thing you can can be seen that uh, if you are here, for example, if you are here, and you want to reach to this particular place. So this is what the path is. You find out that what is the F value of F value of this particular node. OK, this is a node N. Let's assume that there is another node N dash. And from N dash you find out that what is F value of N dash. OK, from here also you can reach to there. But if you want to reach to this particular node, that is the goal node from this particular place, can you reach to this? No, you have to go from here to here. Then only you can come here now. So I say that there is some cost associated when you go from end to end dash by taking some action because you're going to take some action. So there is some cost available associated cost of n and dash a whatever way you want to write. So there is some cost available is there. So this cost plus this value means this cost plus you are going to from here. It should be it should be higher as compared to this fn. Because, because heuristic function is defined in such a way. So this property should, main, should be maintained because it is a smaller distance now because it, you are going to get give a heuristic. So this heuristic would not be good heuristic if this property is not being followed. So it is called the consistency property or monotonicity property. Any questions on that? It makes sense. No, there, there, there is nothing much problematic in this that if you are if you are here, you want can reach reach to the goal place, but you can also reach to the goal from other place that is n dash. But if you want to come from n dash, you have to spend this much more. What is the cost? I don't know. There there would be some cost that is associated going from n to n dash using some action. If you compute the f function, that is that is my guiding function at this end and f function at this n dash and you add this particular cost as well n uh, a n dash it is written here in this way that's why i'm writing here so this particular complete value is going to be larger or equal to to this particular value that is over here so this is the property actually related to this heuristic function heuristic function should be such that uh, interesting part is this that no other optimal algorithm is guaranteed to expand fewer nodes than the a star so that's very good algorithm that it gives you the lesser number of things let's say it is expand lesser number of nodes means what it is going to be very fast we are going to apply this algorithm okay so after that uh, we would come back to the properties of a star once again so let me apply so this I think this slide is better. So here I have graph also so that you can tell me these are the heuristic values that I have. And my goal is to travel from Arad to Bucharest. So I would start from the Arad and I see that from Arad it is 366. Na? So I would write 366 plus 00, zero because we are starting. From Arad there are three places Cebu, Timusaral, Zarind and they have their associated distances. CV 140, 75 and 118. So I put those values over here. 140, uh, uh, 140 plus 253 because CV is 253. Where is CV? So 253 plus 40. Is it clear? Be small. OK, in the same way, 118 plus 223. In the same way, 70 flight plus 374. OK, so which is the lower? 393 is the lower. So I would come back into this particular direction. Expand the things which are here. Now, from Cebu, what are the options? From Cebu options are 
Oradia, Arad, Fegoras, and Velkia, Velsia. You can go Arad also. Go back. It's also possible. So if you go back, Arad, you have to add 280 because 140 you have added, 140 more we have to add to reach to this Arad. So whatever you have till now, 140, you are going to add 140 and Fegoras, what is the distance? Fegoras 99, you have to add. 140 plus 99, 140 plus 80, 140 plus 115, you find out these things. Smaller is Velsia, you go to the Velsia 413. Velsia, you expand in the same way. You find out that minimum is PTST. From PTST, you again expand and you find out the you reached the Bucharest. So this is how you actually go on this. And uh, you can see that answer is 418. And here it was 366. You spend it more. Okay, from Arad 366 was there, but here if 418 you spend it, it can be different also. Okay, makes sense. This is how this algorithm works. So I want to give you a small homework that by yourself, please on this graph, try to reach somewhere else. For example, you reach from Cebu to this place, Cebu to this, okay, or Adia to this place, or else to this place. Try to see that how the things are actually going to change, okay. So by yourself, try to execute this somewhere, okay. And I think, uh, I think, I think I should not uh, give this assignment to you. I'm sorry, I forget this particular thing that for every, and if you change the distance, na, you have to uh, you change if you change the final one uh, destination goal then you have to find out this heuristic that you don't know so go to bucharest only from the maybe here maybe here try to see that how it happens something like that okay all right we have seen that a star now we wanted to understand that this algorithm is optimal okay so we have seen that this is there Okay. Any questions on that? Hmm? So, sir, can you can reiterate what what were these heuristic, heuristic numbers? They are already calculated, and they will be. Yeah. yeah. Please ask this question multiple number of times so that they get registered in your uh, memory. Okay? okay. What I'm telling, I'm telling that. There is something somebody has given you something and I'm calling that as a heuristic. How they are computed, I'm not coming right now. I would come back to them that how to find out the heuristic one. Right now, I'm telling straight line distance, maybe air distance somewhere. So how you come up to this? What is the way to find out them? We would come back with more detail later. Somebody has given us the values and they are our information and I'm using that information to proceed. I'm calling that thing, that information as a heuristic. Okay, okay, okay. Assumed. Okay. Uh, sir, I? Yeah, yeah. Sir. yeah, sir. And for A star, there, uh, this is kind of precondition, like we have to get some heuristic before applying. Hard, because it is a uh, informed search strategy. Na? So where is that information? Somebody Correct. would give you, then only you can proceed with that. Right, right, right sir. Hmm? So a few minutes, few minutes back, I was talking about that. Let's assume that there is a node N, there is a node N dash, and from you want to go to the goal G. So from here, you find out that what is the value F value of N. Here also you can find out F value of N dash. This value, F value of N dash, is going to tell you something about this, not the exact one, and then you have some cast. So let me just focus on this particular value. F value of n dash. F value of n dash is equal to, but definitely G, it is it is a summation of two numbers, G and H on that particular thing. Yes. So G of n dash is equal to, you know that G of n dash is equal to G of n, because how can you reach to this particular thing? You would be reaching from somewhere else. Forget about this. You'd be reaching from somewhere else to that okay let's assume that we have a path from where you are going to be there 
So you'd be reaching from somewhere else. So there would be a cost associated that you go from taking action to n dash and there was some f value over there. So I say that OK, you are you have some G value to till n. G is talking about what? How much you have till now spend it? Plus there is some cost. And then what is the heuristic value at this particular place? Make sense? Because when you reach to n dash and dash, you are reaching from n. So you are going to add what? the constant and we know that this this by this thing is going to be a lesser value if i put is in this place if i put heuristic function of n it is going to be lesser value yes or no so there would be a lesser less sign and this thing is what this is this is the function at the point n so function at the point n and function at the point n dash means whenever you start from somewhere you go to somewhere till your goal so this fn whatever the initial value of fn is there it is going to what increase only it is going to increase because this n dash is larger n dash there is no n there is no n dash n dash is larger as compared to the fn so it is increasing going to increase only any problem on that okay Yes, so this is fine. OK. Uh, uh, to prove the optimality, to prove that this algorithm is optimal, we can say that uh, it is not optimal. Let us take that negative approach. OK. If not, if it is not uh, A star expand the node into the order of the optimal path, if not, then there would be another stable node n dash in the frontier. We have chosen n instead of n dash means how can we do that? Because there is some other node. Uh, there is some better node available, but I'm taking by other node. It is not possible. Since f is not decreasing function, we have similar value of f than n. So can we neglect the n dash means in the frontier? Can I take any other node which is actually not good? It's not possible. So that means that I am going to be into the right way only means A star expand the node into the order of optimal path only. Completeness, I want to prove that this algorithm is complete. Means what? That if there is a solution, I would be able to find out that. Completion means what? If there is a solution, I would be able to find out that. How can I prove this? Okay. So just see that you are at the when you are at the source. There is some f value. Okay, some f value. If you increase, if you include one more node, when you come to this particular thing, so the value of f is going to increase. So is is nearby these nodes also have the you can also consider them. What is the f value here? What is the f value here? What is the f value here? It may be possible that one of them is going to be minimum. So you draw a curve like this, that uh, draw a uh, circle like this, where that includes both of them. Then, what I wanted to tell, let me tell in this way. That uh, when you start, let's assume that f value is hundred. Okay. Then three nodes are here. If you count, consider here 110, 115, 115, for example, or 160. So from 100, this is the circle. The next one you include 110, then you include 150, then you include this one, 160, one node. Can you see this? So it is a contour that you can plot. One by because it's a monotonically increasing function. So every time you are going to find out something which is actually increasing and you can create the graph like this, a curve like this, circle like this. And when all the nodes are there, there would be a maximum value 500 or so. Some value, very high value that would be here. So. And since it is an increasing function, it would increase to blow up to whatever value you have. So in this one, everything is included means what? 
before reaching to this value you would be reached to this particular your goal means you would be able to find out your solution yes or no am i able to tell you what i told you uh, am, I, uh, am i able to convey what i wanted to tell that i have few minutes back we have seen that the value of f is continuously increasing yes or no please please put yes or no i will just take one more minute yes everybody can you write yes 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 sir so i find out what is the value of uh, what is value of f on here 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 i can find out there is no problem in this so i can i can dry contour also these contours are not crossing contour because increasing order of the thing there would be a place when everything is there means what that when the f blows to this particular value all the nodes would be covered in uh, if all the nodes are covered that that glow goal nodes would also be co covered in between somewhere i would find out the goal node and i would stop so that that particular place it means what that definitely it is going to find out the solution this is what the proof for the completeness so i would stop